Good morning. I think there's something about this phrase that goes, is there any other place that you'd rather be than here right now? Uh, I think the pastor probably would rather be here than swimming out in the field trying to hunt a deer. <laughs> Thank you all very much for coming in this morning. Uh, we do have a couple of announcements, if you please, that uh, we've had a couple of deaths in our family. Uh, Charlene uh, Ewing will be Monday, tomorrow, at 9 o'clock. The funeral will be t at 10. Both of those will be here. And in the afternoon at 2, Mary Lou Kimball, uh, the funeral will be at the funeral home. What's the name of the one up Leonard north? Miller. Leonard Miller. Leonard Miller, okay. Uh, and the other, anything else that I uh, know on as far as uh, announcements is be sure to sign your pad and pass it down the line. <laughs> Uh, I want to make sure he says he hears that. I'd also like to mention he's been talking about apportionments, which is an important part of our ministry worldwide. Our ministry as uh, United Methodists does go all around the world. Yes, we have the people that have to administer and uh, lead us within our ministry throughout the state, but we, it goes much farther than that. Uh, much of our, minister, our appropriation apportionments goes toward uh, ministering in other countries, uh, particularly in Africa. Uh, they've been having some real strong challenges there that uh, we need to handle. So we, we do have a group of uh, people who have said that they'll match up to $5,000 uh, by having the apportionments uh, turned in the, by the end of the month. So. If you care to do that, I'd appreciate it very much. And if you do have questions, uh, don't he hesitate to ask. Are there any other announcements that need to be made before we open for worship and we are ready to go? Thank you. Majestic 
Great is your name in all the earth, O Lord. We praise your name, O Lord. We magnify your name, Prince of Peace, mighty God, O Lord God Almighty. O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O Lord, we praise your name. O Lord, we magnify your name, Prince of Peace, mighty God. O Lord God Almighty. Good morning. Okay, there we go. Will you join me in the greeting prayer? Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, May all my thoughts in worship, may all my words in singing, may all that I do, may all that I do here in this place, and when the service is through, may I go about my life living in such a way, let's, let's join in the opening song, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Will you join me in the opening prayer? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, 
you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins that we may celebrate a rite to commemoration of the Nativity and may await with joy the coming in glory of Jesus Christ our Redeemer who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus is near, despite the busyness, the pressure, and the assault of our senses that so often passes for Christmas. We have the promise of scripture that Jesus is near. When the shopping drains us physically, and the spending drains us financially, when we forget which party we're supposed to attend on which day, when we think we can't stand to hear rocking around the Christmas tree one more time, then we will remember to rejoice and again rejoice. And we will light a candle to help us remember that Jesus is near. The peace of God will keep us in Christ Jesus. Let us join in the passing of the peace together. The peace of Christ be with you. As we have received grace and love in Jesus Christ, let us share.
Christ's peace with one another with one another. Amen. Let us hear the proclamation, which is Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Now can we may have the children. Dr. Terrell likes, would like to talk to you. That should do it. Okay, welcome. Nice to have you here this morning. And I thought you might be interested in a history lesson. I'll just bet you're looking forward to a history lesson, aren't you? But basically, I think it's very wonderful for us to appreciate the situation of before the birth of Jesus. It's hard to imagine a world without Jesus in it. But at the time that he was born, the Israelites had established their kingdom and they had been a very proud kingdom. But in the meantime, the Romans had conquered Israel and it was a very unhappy time. The Romans were very cruel. They required taxes to be paid to Rome. And so the Jewish people were not very happy at that time. The one thing that really kept them going was a prophecy. And in the Old Testament, it had told about a Messiah that was going to come. He was going to be king of the Jews. He was going to be their savior. And so basically, that uh, was the thing that kind of kept them going. And it's interesting because way back in Isaiah, maybe a thousand years before Jesus was born, and it's told that it would be of the line of David. David had been a great king and a warrior. And so they knew that one of his descendants would be the Messiah. And the wonderful part about it is that um, it gave them hope. And they wondered what kind of a person this would be. Would it be a, a king that would come in? Would it be a warrior? Would it be someone that threw off the yoke of Rome and make it a 
more wonderful place to live and literally realize that it was going to be a baby boy. And so we're going to talk about that uh, next week because I'm going to come back and talk about the birth of Jesus. Thank you for coming up, and we'll give a short prayer. Dear God, we thank thee for the great gift that God gave us in Jesus Christ. We should appreciate the message he gave us and live according to what he said. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Well, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you. Pastor this morning has asked me to speak on uh, about
about a man that uh, not a word in the Bible is he saved. We can search the Bible, search the concordiums, and we don't find anything that Joseph said. We're going to talk about Joseph this morning. Joseph, who uh, was a man of destiny. Joseph, who uh, came into a picture, not of his own volition. He's drawn into this. If he had his choice, he would be somewhere else. Joseph is cornered, and he ponders. Scripture says that he ponders. Let's turn to Matthew. Matthew 1. Let's see, I thought it was in this Bible. Matthew 1, and we we'll begin with the story at verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise when as Mother Mary was exposed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily, privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Son of David, fear not to take Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save the people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and called the name of his son Jesus. Well, we have with us some special people this morning. I want to, I want to, from the pulpit, acknowledge uh, Bill Scanlon, Harry Scanlon, and the legacy that Charlene and Forrest left with us, and Barbara. Uh, what a legacy, what a family. To be born in a Christian family today is like, just hardly happens in America, hardly happens any place in the world, being born into a Christian family. And these two guys and Barbara were born into a Christian family. Praise be the Lord for you two and for Barbara and for what you bring to us. Carry it on. We expect that of you. Well, Pastor Phil has asked me, as I told you, to talk about somebody that his words are not in the Bible. As we search the scriptures, we don't find anything that Joseph said. Why is that? Silent man, cornered, trapped. When he ponders his fate, what is he going to come up with? When he thinks about what he has, what the situation he's been put in, where do I go from here? What do I do? Do I listen to the law? The law says to put her away. Mary could be stoned. Put her away privately, and then the Lord intercedes. Gabriel comes to him in a dream. And Gabriel says to him, take Mary as your wife. This is of the Lord. This is of the Lord. How many people have heard anything like that? How many of the people in history have been trapped the way Joseph was trapped? Let's think about Joseph. While not a word is printed in the Bible, we know where he lived. He lived in Nazareth. We know what he did. He was a carpenter. We know where they traveled. He traveled to Bethlehem, and then they traveled clear to Egypt and back again. We know these things about Joseph, don't we? Matthew is careful, very careful, to set out the lineage of, Matthew, of, of Joseph from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob on down through Solomon and David. 
It's a noble history. In Jewish history, this is a regal lineage. This is a godly lineage. This is a kingly lineage. No lineage is expected or heard of about Matthew or Mark or Luke or John. Only Jesus, Abraham, Joseph, and Mary. If we knew the lineage of the disciples, it would have been printed, but it was never printed, not worthy of being printed. When he pondered, and we know there was a time span between the time Joseph came to hearing the, the angel Gabriel and between the time that Mary had her announcement to Joseph, he must have pondered and he must have wondered and he must have turned to the Lord. What was he going to tell his father? What was he going to tell his mother, his friends? You know, peer pressure is so great on this man. What would he do? Is he going to save himself and put her away? Well, that's not the Lord's plan, is it? We know the Lord's plan is different. And Gabriel intercedes. Gabriel comes to him and sets him straight. And he turns around. He turns 180 degrees from where he might have been. If Satan had any plans for him, they went down in flames. If Satan had decided to put in his mind what the Sanhedrin could do, what the synagogue could do to him, if Satan put that there, he put it to sleep. It never took root, never took root in him. The same power that they look beyond their own culture and their own friends, even their own father and their mother, to their faith, which is totally, totally in God. It had to be in God. They didn't care what would happen to them. They knew what would happen to them. If there's a 21st century message of Joseph's life, and that event that changed his life, it is that when we allow our culture to come upon any part of us to our social standing, when we worry about our social standing to our culture and where we stand, we demean God, we demean God and our faith in him when we don't turn to him absolutely. If there's another message to us, when well-meaning friends come to us with a plan, with some fun, with something to do, with something new, a new avenue in our life to follow, and it demeans or puts down any part of our faith, we have to turn to one of the scriptures that we really need to commit to memory. That's 1 Corinthians 3.16. Don't you know that you are God's temple and the Holy Spirit resides within you? Don't you know that you are God's temple and the Holy Spirit resides in you? It's up to us to keep that holy temple holy or God will take a walk until we come to our senses. Believe that. You better know that. We need to keep that temple holy. And that's up to us to do that. And then Satan is going to be knocking at the door every chance he gets. If Joseph's story does nothing else, it should prompt us to take inventory of our spiritual life because he did and they did. If we are secluding any part of darkness in our life, any sinfulness that we like to sweep under the rug and let it not come to light, if we don't go to the cross to that, do you know what we do to the cross? We demean the cross. We put down the price that Jesus Christ paid on the cross for us. When we don't take it to the cross, 
and completely be absolved of our sins. We deprecate what Jesus Christ did for us. Scripture doesn't tell us what Joseph's reward was. Not a word. We don't know what happened to Joseph. He disappears. No, he doesn't. I'll tell you what happened to Joseph. Every father in this room knows what happened to Joseph. When he looked down into that manger and saw that baby and picked up the baby Jesus, he picked up God. He picked up the Son of God and he looked into his eyes and he is the only man in history that looked into the face of Jesus as he did. He remembered what those authors had written 800, 1,000 years before this, what Isaiah had predicted would happen. He's holding that prediction in his hands, in his arms. The story of Joseph just blesses us, doesn't it, at Christmas time? We need to feel that blessing. Everyone sitting here should be blessed by that. Everyone here should know that they are ambassadors, emissaries, prophets. Prophets in the sense that we know what happened to Jesus Christ and what will happen to you and I and to this nation if we don't turn to the Lord. That's ours to do. Nobody outside is going to do that for you and I. That's up to each of us to do. I want to close to a single Bible verse. It has nothing to do with Joseph or Mary. It has everything to do with Jesus Christ, your Savior. You all remember the story. Some of the disciples had fished all night long and caught zip. And a voice from the shore says, throw the net out on the right side of the boat. And they do. And what do they do? They haul in a net full of fish. We even know how many. How many was it? 153. You all know that. And then they come to shore and they meet Jesus seated on a golden throne. No. This is what John says. Then Jesus went around serving us the bread and the fish the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, walks around serving them, the fishermen. The Messiah served the fishermen. The epitome of holiness, the crowning glory of Christendom, serving, serving fishermen. We cannot be any more blessed than to serve in his name. There is no greater blessing than to serve in the name of Jesus Christ and stand on his, your faith in him. Amen.
Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. We have a prayer request for Helen Satterley. She fell and broke a hip. And the operation is going to be this morning. And I hope hers goes well. <laughs> I certainly pray that it does. We have had a couple of people in our family that have had some surgeries within the last few days or weeks. Uh, and we did have prayers going out to them. And as far as I know, things are going well. Isn't it great what prayer will do? And I do have a special uh, he hello to Janet. Uh, your mother's service was great uh, at the Good Neighbor Home. It was special for that group. Uh, there'll be a later uh, service that uh, we'll hear about at some future time. Do we have any prayer requests from any of you? Thank you. Yes, the, the family of Mary Lou Kimball and the family of Charlene Scanlon. The prayers do go out to them. We are so grateful for that. How many went to see that in Minneapolis? Fifteen. And uh, retail, custom, uh, retail businesses in uh, Minnesota are grateful for those 15 people going. <laughs> but we're also grateful for all of the help that all of you did in bringing boxes for those Operation Christian Ch uh, Christian Christmas Child that will be going around the world. Any other prayer? Uh, I think we pass on that. But anyone else? If not, let us take time for the ushers to come forward with the offering.
as we stand before the manger scene that will be increasing as we come closer to the time of Jesus' birth, let us give thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, praise to you for the time that you bring us together, uh, the time for us to praise you and to realize that power lies in you and not in us. We are so thankful for what you give to us in the way of tithes, skills, music, and so on. And at this time, we are able to just give back a part of that. But we do want to give back not only a part of the money, perhaps, but a, a part of the love and the praise and the music that you send forth to us on these holy days. We are anxiously awaking, awaiting Christ's coming, and we look forward to that day with great anticipation. Thank you, God, for bringing us this child who taught us in later years to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art
Let us rejoice. What a great day. And I have to say a special thank you to almost every one of you because I find each and every day how I see more and more people giving of your talents in this family of ours. It is so great to see all the time that you spend doing things here and for others. Can we not praise that enough? And I say, rejoice! So let us go from this place, dear people, that we are so thankful for the time that we have together. We are so thankful for the, the hands, the minds, all that working together for your glory, dear God. We are so anxious for, anxious for the arrival of your blessed Son. We know that he is coming. We know that he has been here once. We know that he has come to save us from our sins. Let us go from this place, this day, to have a blessed time, a blessed day, a time with family to praise and glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tom, first, we, there is the angel trees. Anyone that has uh, angel tree gifts, those need to be in because the delivery is going to be on Friday, so please have those in by tomorrow if possible. But thank you all very much.